I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, April the 9th, brought to you in part by Specialty Risk Insurance. Specialty Risk Insurance is committed to agriculture. They insure all areas of ag with specific team focused on LRP insurance. Uh, if, you, if you work with Specialty Risk Insurance with the LRPs, you'll get 24-7 service from some agents that know what's going on, guys. So for more information, go to SpecialtyRiskInsuranceAgency.com. Also, Beaver County Stockyards in Beaver, Oklahoma, uh, kind of running out of cattle here until they, uh, they're going to hit a couple of weeks. It'll get a little bigger there. Uh, later this spring with some graze out wheat coming, but uh, or some cattle coming off graze out wheat. Uh, but for this week, about 2,000s all. Uh, they'll have about 1,500 yearlings, uh, 500 yearling heifers weighing in the sevens and the eights. Uh, be mostly offered in load lots. Uh, one load out of there will be replacement quality black heifers. If you're interested in something like that, about 600 yearling steers. Uh, weighing in the sevens, mostly eights and a few nines there, uh, mostly offered in load lots. The balance of the yearlings will be uh, smaller lots of mixed yearlings and calf weight yearlings. If you're looking for some cattle to turn out, they'll have a few of those. Only two or three hundred uh, lighter calves there. They'll, they'll mostly all be weaned also. On Wednesday for the cow sale, they have about 300 head of cows. Uh, about 35 head of four to six year old black pears. If you're interested in some of those, uh, another 15 head consignment of red pears. Uh, and they'll be young to middle aged. Uh, there'll be 30 head of three to four year old heavy bred uh, uh, young bred cows there, if you're interested in those. And uh, that will be a, a pretty nice offering of mixed replacement cattle within the the slaughter cattle and bulls that they'll have on Wednesday uh, Next week on Wednesday April the 17th their cow and bull sale or um, and, and way up cows and uh, bread cows and things on Wednesday will be uh, also held uh, With the Griswold production sale. They're gonna have 25 head of Sim Angus bulls uh, there will also be two loads of three to five year old pears there and one load of black replacement heifers. That will be on April the 17th on a Wednesday. Uh, the following week uh, on April the 23rd, they're not going to have their Wednesday cow sales anymore. They'll have them in conjunction uh, with the feeder sale and then do that uh, on through the summer there. But uh, the main reason they're going to start that on April 23rd is because that is the same week as the Hempfield County Cattlemen's Conference there down in Canadian and that is in uh, Beaver County Stockyards trade area there. Uh, they are planning on doing a big thing there. I'm actually going to be in the booth uh, for Beaver County Stockyards in there uh, in the trade show. So stop and give us a give us a holler if you see us there. Uh, that's going to be a pretty big uh, occasion there and I'm looking forward to going down there for that. Your feeder cattle board uh, weighs on the cash. Uh, it finally uh, got heavy enough that uh, it took the cash market down starting on a Monday. Of course we saw our mid to late week sales uh, sharply lower on cattle going right into the feedlot and on lighter weight new crop calves. Last week, well, it hit our big high volume Monday sales pretty hard. Uh, with that board falling on Friday, we didn't really get to see how bad it was going to be. Uh, but whenever your board was down five bucks on feeder cattle contracts on Friday, we knew we were going to be under some pretty heavy pressure. And it sure showed up uh, Monday in your cash markets, and that's unfortunate. But also on your, your uh, big Monday high volume markets, that is a good representation of what your corporate feeders are thinking and they turn cattle out also but uh, they definitely backed off of those cattle on the big high volume Monday sales but we've still got some stick out sales we'll talk about at the at the end of the feeder flash here but uh, uh, one thing that has not backed off is your way up cows and bulls uh, your fresh 90s are uh, near all time records that's your leanest uh, grinding beef there uh, cow and bull prices and your sale barns and the main reason that uh, we see that reflective 
market when there's really good demand because most of your cows and bulls are sold in auction markets so we can see that uh, your cow and bull packers uh, don't don't uh, monopolize as much as your uh, steering heifer packers as much you know that's natural and so you see them coming to the market and bidding on the cattle and uh, we didn't have as much imports of beef during February as we had on January. January we had a huge import month but February uh, beef imports were down 30 percent like I said before that's mostly grinding meat so uh, your, your cow and bull packers are having to go to the auctions and bid against one another uh, to get what they need. Uh, we've seen some very very impressive especially bull prices because they need uh, that really lean meat there to, to try to get those down and get it into what we call like a fresh 90 there but uh, uh, we've seen some high prices everywhere no higher than New Holland sales stables in New Holland Pennsylvania it's a market I'm very familiar with I worked at that market uh, or in and around there in Lancaster County Pennsylvania for three years uh, but at New Holland on Monday uh, they sold bulls uh, that weighed uh, over and just under a ton one at 227 and one at 229 wow and we can only get uh, 184 for fat cattle that's uh, that's kind of disappointing there but we didn't get any new uh, news uh, about the bird flu or the avian influenza uh, nothing new nothing to scare things up a little bit at all so we saw our, our futures market come back with just a little you know when we're going down five dollars and then back up uh you know maybe a dollar or so here and there uh we can't catch up doing that but uh, uh so we're just kind of i guess leaving that uh that bird flu where it's at right now it's in 16 dairy herds across six different states but at least two of those states were just uh where they brought in dairy cattle from a original infected state there or infected herd but uh, uh, still haven't heard any more about uh, cows passing it to one another or any cows infected of it uh, that are of a, of a beef uh, breed it's just been dairy stuff so far but uh, we did see uh, fats at uh, Callaway Livestock Center in Kingdom City Missouri they don't get a lot of fat cattle there but there's a few producers there in mid-Missouri that fatten up a few cattle and bring them in there to Callaway and they've got some kind of small packers there that come in and bid on them their pack their fat cattle sold from 187 and a half to 191 everywhere we see uh, bidding competitive bidding on fat cattle we see a good market I wish that everybody that sits selling in a negotiated manner I realize all you guys which is uh, the majority of you are in some kind of a formula deal but if you've got fat cattle and loose hands that you're wanting to sell I wish everybody would put them up for sale in an auction and it wouldn't have to necessarily be a brick and mortar sale but you could consign them to the fed cattle exchange uh, you could even consign them uh, to, to a cooperative that pools the cattle together to get more competition like consolidated beef producers or producers of Omaha just some place to try to get a little bit of leverage guys this is not working everybody trying to individually do their own thing uh, and then them killing it with a black swan every time it pokes its head up a little bit but uh, we'll have a fat cattle auction in Yankton on Tuesday uh, on Wednesday in, in the Worthing South Worthing South Dakota and Sioux Falls Regional Livestock uh, you can consign them to Tama and Iowa uh, but uh, you know it's just best to put cattle up for bids it's the way you sell them guys let's talk about your board on uh, Monday to open the week live cattle futures uh, for for April there up 115 at 179.40 June up 127 at 173.32 all your back months of live cattle were higher from up 37 cents to up 92 April feeder cattle up 160 at 239.30 but they are about eight or nine dollars cheaper uh, than your cash index levels but I guess that's why they're coming off of them so fast here early in the week in your cash markets and those index levels will be coming down and I'll talk about your real-time index and you're seeing me cash feeder cattle index in a minute but uh, you know it's not often we see 
Uh, we sometimes see your, your uh, spot uh, feeder cattle contract up ahead of your index levels, but very rarely do we see it fall that much below it. But, uh, but your, your commodity people and your funds, they don't care anything about fundamentals. Uh, they're looking at lines, squiggly lines, and they're looking for opportunities, guys. And they're wanting to ride this thing down. May feeder cattle down a buck. So your spot month on eight, on feeder cattle was higher. All the rest were down. May was down another dollar. It was down five bucks on Friday. But 237.17 and your back months were down 37 to 62 cents lower. May corn 434 and a quarter down one and a quarter cent a bushel. Beans down one and a half cents at 11.93. Kansas City hard red winter wheat for May down seven cents at 5.78 and a quarter. Your weighted average on last week's negotiated fed cattle sales in your five area feeding region totaled 65,900. That uh, was more than the 46,500 the week before, uh, but less than 83,600 the same week a year ago. Live sales of fat steers and heifers in your five area feeding region ranged in price from 183 to 187. That's steady to $4 lower. Weighted average on live steers was 185.73. That was $2.50 lower than the previous week. We lose it in hunks. Uh, your dress market, 295 to 298. That's a pretty narrow spread there. One to four dollars lower. Uh, your weighted average on dress steers, 296.87. That was down 262. As a whole, your Northern Plains live market was 187, three dollars lower. Dress market was 297, also three dollars lower. Southern Plains was 184, which is two dollars lower than the previous week. Nationwide, we sold 80,000 head negotiated, 63,700 the previous week, and 103,000 the same week a year ago. Of that 80,000 nationwide negotiated, about 23% of them were sold for a 15 to 30 day delivery, not current. Uh, negotiated grid sales were 43,800. Not seeing very many forward contract sales with the way they're beating this board down and everybody knowing that it should be higher. Just 15,100 formula sales last week, 242,700 head of the four out of five feeding regions that we get information from. Iowa sold 18,900 negotiated last week. Nebraska sold 28,100, a lot more than Iowa, which is not usual. Kansas sold 11,900 last week, and Texas sold 7,000 head negotiated last week in your fed cattle arena. Box beef cutout values took a huge jump to start the week. Now we saw your packers get really aggressive on the slaughter on Saturday, and more so late in the week last week, and I guess they knew that box beef cutout values were going to go up early this week. They control the supplies on both sides, guys. And it's not like your box beef cutout values is a negotiated price. It's a posted price by your packers and then your wholesale buyers. They buy as much of it as they want. And they pretty much only tell us what they want us to know. But it was sharply higher on Monday. Choice cuts up 490, back over three dollars at 30207. Selects were over three dollars, also up 557 at 300 dollars and 27 cents. Your slaughter to start the week not too shabby, 121 thousand. That's 12 thousand more than last Monday, and uh, and 9 thousand more than the same uh, period uh, of the week a year ago. Talk about what else is going on. Coffee Bill Stockyard Spring Yearling Video Special is coming up here this Saturday. And Tyler Layton there, he's doing a really good job, owns both of those Coffee Bill Stockyards. Uh, the one in the North Barn in Kansas and the South Barn in Oklahoma. He has these video specials uh, periodically with DV Auction, kind of puts the dog on. He'll have whores divorce and drinks theirs. Guys, but uh, if you want to get fancy, you'll have hors d'oeuvres. Uh, but it'll be a good time. Be a good showing of cattle there. Uh, over 10,000 head of yearlings. Have a few lots of, uh, of long-time weaned uh, calves there that'll be ready to turn out on grass. All these cattle are going to deliver from April the 15th to June the 1st. So if you're needing some cattle, 
uh, and, and big strings there, it'd be a good time to do it. It's going to be Saturday, April the 13th, starting at 6 p.m. It's going to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, it's going to be uh, held actually in the Oklahoma State University's uh, Student Union Building in room 465. But you can get on dvauction.com, make sure you talk to them, get approved. You can view and bid the sale right there on DV Auction. And uh, we're going to have Susie there taking care of that because I'm going to be somewhere else. But uh, don't forget about that Coffeeville Stockyard Special Video Yearling Spring Sale. Let's talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV Auction. Late in the day on Monday, sitting at 245.20. That was down 207. Your latest CME cash feeder cattle index it's 248.62. Now that's going to be falling, just like your real-time index there. But 248.62 on the real, on your CME feeder cattle index. Your latest April feeder cattle board 239.30, and it's going to line up. It's cash settled. It will line up, guys. So uh, that guess you just do with that what you want. Talk about your big sales on Monday. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma National Stockyards at 6,800 head. The feeder steers were eight to twelve bucks lower. Uh, the, the feeder cattle, both both uh, steers and heifers, eight to twelve lower. Uh, steer and heifer calves, ten to fifteen dollars lower. That's a hunk, guys. Uh, but uh, National was still selling, or they, uh, the middleweight cattle were selling the best, of course. Uh, and National Livestock Commission sold seventy-seven steers, weighed six seventy-eight at two eighty-four fifty. I didn't think that was too awful bad there. Joplin Regional Stockyards had 6,600. They were only estimating 5,000. Showed up with an extra 1,600. That's more than most of them get all together. But steers all weights 10 to 20 bucks lower. Ouch. Heifers 8 to 15 dollars lower. This is called by uh, Federal State Market News. Uh, they, they noted that the full decline was on the the new crop lightweight calves and uh, then that's uh, you know that's expected there but those are sharp losses in our two biggest Monday high volume sales there let's talk about some individual quotes from other sales around on Monday West Point Livestock Auction West Point Nebraska sells 68 head of heifers weighed 839 at 237 that's kind of a steer price there for feeder heifers, guys. Callaway Livestock Center in Kingdom City, Missouri sells 56 steers, weighs 655 at 299.50. Aberdeen Livestock Sales up in South Dakota sells 80 steers, weighs 765 at 283. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Monday, your Macrosin, no BS, top quote for the day. Come out of Elgin, Nebraska at Elgin Livestock Sales. It was 60 steers that weighed 850 at 256.75. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.